Government order of the day number one. International Finance Agreements Amendment Bill, third reading. Uh, the Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, I move that the International Finance Agreements Amendment Bill uh, be now read a third time. Uh, just to remind ourselves uh, what this bill is, Mr Speaker, the, it amends the International Finance Agreements Act 1961 in order to enable the New Zealand Government to become a founding member of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. Uh, the Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade Committee proposed one amendment to the bill uh, and the Government has accepted that amendment. Mr Speaker, through a number of uh, uh, amicable uh, discussions about this bill, uh, it's become pretty clear that there's broad uh, parliamentary support for it. Uh, the New Zealand Government was the first developed country to uh, participate in discussions with the Chinese Government about setting up the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. And as has been acknowledged in the debate and the committee stages, uh, the role of uh, New Zealand's role in bringing about what is now a, a very high, a high quality multilateral institution uh, is something we should be proud of. It was certainly effective. And in that context, I want to uh, thank John Whitehead, former Secretary of the Treasury, who acted as New Zealand's principal negotiator on uh, this bank. I'm sure he found it much more uh, time consuming than he expected with meetings held all over the globe uh, and at a level of intensity that was required to get this Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank up and running in record time. And our interest in it has been largely strategic. We're in the Asia-Pacific region. We have the opportunity now, because of our range of free trade agreements, uh, to trade with the faster growing economies in the world. Uh, some of which have quite large populations and as yet uh, very relatively small penetration by New Zealand trade, uh, Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia. These countries will grow faster if they can finance high quality infrastructure. This bank is one of the ways, uh, by, one of the ways by which we can influence that process uh, and we have done constructively. Mr Speaker, the form of the bill is that it gives articles of the AIIB Articles of Agreement, the force of law in New Zealand. Uh, the bill extends the various privileges and immunities to the AIIB and its employees, exempts it from taxation, provides for permanent legislative authority to meet the capital contributions under the agreement, and our capital contribution will be small relative to others because we're a small economy, uh, but it will amount to uh, over $100 million uh, in order, to, in order for New Zealand to take up its pro-rated shareholding. Uh, Mr Speaker, I want to thank the opposition parties and the select committee for the constructive way in which they have dealt with this uh, issue. Increasingly, our fortunes are tied to those of the Asia-Pacific. Uh, increasingly, as free trade agreements multiply, global supply chains become more normal, even for quite small New Zealand businesses. Uh, increasingly, as we see an Asian flavour to the investment that's coming to New Zealand, uh, then this is just one more uh, plank in the bridge between us and Asia. Uh, and, Mr Speaker, that's been, I think, uh, acknowledged by all the parties in Parliament uh, and by the work of the Select Committee. The National Interest Assessment that was done by the Select Committee uh, showed that it was in the interests of New Zealand. Uh, so if we pass this, get the third reading of this bill done, uh, then uh, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank uh, will be up and running in the first half of uh, next year. And I want to thank Parliament for allowing that to occur. Members, the question is that the motion be agreed to.